if I can add something, is that, I mean, the general principle here is that it, any part of this could fail and the car will keep driving. So you could have cameras fail, you could have uh, power circuits fail, you could have one of the Tesla full, full self-driving computer chips fail, the car keeps driving. The probability of, the, of this computer failing is substantially lower than somebody losing consciousness. That's the key metric. All right, folks, let's dive into the brain of the beast, Tesla's full self-driving computer. Imagine this, parts of your car start failing left and right, cameras, power circuits, maybe a chip or two, but your Tesla, it keeps cruising along like nothing's wrong. Thanks to Tesla's fancy computer chip, it's like having a car that's too cool to care about a flat tire at a party. Now every Tesla rolling off the line today isn't just packed with dreams and electric zest, it's fully equipped with all the hardware needed for full self-driving. That's right, it's like buying a smartphone with all the apps you'll ever need. And the best part? The current owners just need to wait for software updates. It's sort of like waiting for the next season of your favorite show to drop, knowing it's going to be binge-worthy. LiDAR is a fool's errand, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. You'll see. Moving on to LAR, or as Tesla might call it, look, another redundancy. Elon Musk thinks LAR is like bringing an encyclopedia to a tweet fight. Overkill and totally last century. It's expensive, and frankly, when it comes to powering a city ride, it drinks electricity like a tourist with a free drink ticket. And here's where Tesla flexes. With their fleet of tech-loaded cars cruising around, collecting all sorts of data, Tesla holds a colossal advantage. It's like being the only player in a poker game who knows all the cards. This fleet isn't just big, it's like having an army of robots that learn every minute they're on the road. So while others are playing catch up, Tesla is busy teaching its cars to handle anything from a squirrel crossing to a UFO sighting. Well, maybe not UFOs, but you get the idea. But the Tesla journey doesn't stop there. Every day is an exciting discovery with ups and downs, which makes it even more interesting. That is why Tesla keeps gathering more and more investors into its rabbit hole. But do you know who else shares in pro-Tesla optimism? That would be today's sponsor, Seeking Alpha. When it comes to Tesla's impressive growth, it's not just about observing from the sidelines. For Tesla bulls and those with a keen eye for uncovering the next stock market gem, Seeking Alpha is your one-stop shop offering the latest on Tesla, Tesla stock price targets, Tesla innovation, and everything Elon Musk. Sidestep the anti-Tesla noise of the lamestream media. Seeking Alpha is the best pro-Tesla news source on the internet. Clicking on the affiliate links in the description and making a purchase may earn our channel a commission. Thanks for your support. Unfortunately, the only way to navigate it, LA traffic. The car can operate if it's completely disconnected from the fleet. It just the, it uploads the training that's better and better as the fleet gets better and better. So simply, if you disconnected it from the fleet, from that point onwards, it would stop getting better, but it would still function fine. The compute power in the full self-driving computer is incredible. And it, maybe we should mention that if it had never seen that road before, it would still have made those predictions provided it was a road in the United States. They're all gonna dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mock my words. Next up, let's talk about why Tesla cars are like that overachiever in your class who never needs to study but still aces the exams. Elon Musk points out the sheer power of Tesla's driving computer. Imagine this. A Tesla can handle LA's infamous traffic jams all on its own, even if it's cut off from the rest of its robot buddies. But here's the catch. If it stops chatting with its fleet, it stops learning new tricks. It's like trying to learn a new dance without ever watching a video. You can freestyle, sure, but you might not be winning any contests. And about LiDAR, Elon's not a fan. He basically calls it the VHS of car sensors. Too pricey, unnecessary, and honestly, just not the best tool for peeking through fog or heavy rain. Why use an expensive flashlight when you've got military-grade night vision, right? We have 425,000 cars with hardware to and beyond, which is means they've got all eight cameras, the right, the radar and ultrasonics, and they've got at least a video computer, which is enough to essentially figure out what information is important, what is not, compress the information that is important to the most salient elements, and upload it to the network for training. So it's a massive compression of real-world data. I suppose it could possibly be used for something besides self-driving. We've been too focused on self-driving, so as we get that really nailed, maybe there's going to be some other use for millions and then tens of millions of computers with hardware, three or full self-driving computer. Yeah, maybe there would be. It could be, maybe there's some sort of aid angle here. It's possible. Moving to 732, Tesla reassures us that they've got the hardware department covered. Their cars are equipped with enough sensory and processing oomph to digest the real world's complex data buffet and still ask for seconds. 
The key here is all about knowing where you can drive. Tesla's got a knack for predicting drivable space, which is super important. And relying on GPS? Tesla says, nope. That's like using a map from the 90s to navigate today's roads. GPS is fine for a nudge in the right direction, but when it comes to the nitty gritty of driving, it's all about what the car can see and process. In other words, GPS to a Tesla is like that friend who swears they know a shortcut, but ends up getting you even more lost. Um, the whole system from a hardware standpoint has been designed to, for, to be a robo taxi since basically October 2016. So when we rolled out hardware, uh, Autopilot version two. But we, we do not expect to upgrade cars made before that. We think it would actually cost more to make a new car than to upgrade the cars. Just to give you a sense of how hard it is to do this. Unless it's designed in, it's not worth it. So we've gone through the future of self-driving, where it's clear it's hardware, it's vision, and then there's a lot of software. And there's the software problem here should not be minimized. It's a massive software problem that, yeah, managing vast amounts of data, training against the data, how do you control the car based on the vision? It's a very difficult software problem. So Rewind to 2016, and Tesla was already putting pieces in place for their self-driving robo-taxis. Here's the lowdown. Even if the main power pack decides to take the day off, Tesla's systems are designed to keep the steering and brakes working smoothly on auxiliary power. It's like having a backup generator for your car, only cooler because it steers and brakes. But let's talk software because managing this robo fleet isn't just a bunch of 0s and 1s. It's a colossal task that involves digesting heaps of data, training AI to see the world like we do, and making sure the car knows how to handle every curveball the road throws its way. Think of it as trying to teach a robot how to navigate a teenager's room. Chaotic, unpredictable, but somehow it works. Production said so we'd get over 5,000 cars a week for Model 3. At this point, 5,000 cars a week is a walk in the park for us. It's not even hard. So we do large scale solar, which we did through the Solar City acquisition, and that we develop and deploy the solar roof, which is going really well. We're now on version three of the solar tile roof, and we expect to spill our production of the solar tile roof significantly later this year. I, I have it on, on my house, and it's great. And I, 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 I make the power wall and the power pack. And we made the power wall and power pack. In fact, the power pack is now deployed in massive grid scale utility systems around the world, in, including the largest operating battery projects in the world that are above 100 megawatts. And in the next, or probably by next, in the next year, two years at the most, we expect to have a giga, gigawatt scale battery project completed. Fast forward to now, and Tesla is not just about fancy electric cars anymore. Elon Musk is talking big numbers, like 10,000 cars a week big. And it's not just cars, we're talking solar projects and batteries that are more juiced up than your average energy drink. This is like the car manufacturing version of a power up in a video game. And the future, it's all about expanding horizons with the Model Y, semi trucks, and yes, those autonomous robo taxis we've been teased about. Slated for next year, these taxis promise to make the driver's seat optional. That's right, soon your car might be doing all the driving while you sit back, relax, and wonder why you ever put up with traffic jams. It's like hiring a chauffeur, but one that's cool with just charging up instead of needing a paycheck. So we see potential for smoothing out the demand distribution curve and having the car operate at a much higher utility than a normal car would operate. So like typically the use of a car is about 10 to 12 hours a week. So most people will drive one and a half to two hours a day, typically 10 to 12 hours a week of total driving. But if you have a, a car that can operate autonomously, then most likely you could probably, most likely you'd have that car operate for a third of the week or longer. So there are 100 hours in a week. So probably you've got something on the order of 55 to 60 hours a week of operation, maybe a bit longer. So the fundamental utility of a vehicle increases by a factor of five. So you can look at this from a macroeconomic standpoint and say just, if, if this was like some, if we were operating some big simulation, if, if you could upgrade your simulation to increase the utility of cars by a factor of five, that would be a massive increase in the economic efficiency of the simulation. Just gigantic. Let's zoom into Tesla's plans for their robo taxis, which are not just designed to drive you around, but are built to last like a million miles last. The current Model 3 Robo Taxi costs less than $38,000 and is essentially the marathon runner of cars designed to keep going and going, and the future looks even brighter and cheaper, with plans for a $25,000 Robo Taxi in just three years. Imagine that, a car that costs less than some people spend on coffee in a lifetime, plus it comes with fewer parts. It's like dieting, but for your car. Trimming off the unnecessary bits to focus on efficiency. You say like probably two years from now, we make a car that has no 
steering wheels and pedals. And if we need to accelerate that time, we can always just delete parts, easy. Yeah, probably say long term, three years, rubber taxis with eliminated parts, maybe it ends up being $25,000 or less. And we want a super efficient car so that the electricity consumption is very low. So we're currently at four and a half miles per kilowatt hour, but we can, we'll improve that to five and beyond. And there's just really no, no company that has the full stack integration. We've got the, the vehicle design and manufacturing, we've got the computer hardware, in-house, we've got the in-house software development the, and, and AI, and we've got by far the biggest fleet. It's extremely difficult, not impossible perhaps, but extremely difficult to catch up when Tesla has 100 times more miles per day than everyone else combined. Tesla flexes its giant fleet muscles. With 100 times more miles being driven per day than its competitors, Tesla's data game is stronger than a bodybuilder on espresso. This isn't just a show-off contest, it translates into a potential gold mine. Each robo-taxi could rake in about $30,000 a year in gross profit. That's like your car working a side hustle as a CEO. Plus, with each taxi designed to last a million miles, we're talking about long-term earning potential that could make even your accountant smile. And then once regulators are comfortable with us not having a steering wheel, we'll just delete that. And for cars that are, on the, that are in the fleet, obviously with the permission of the owner, if it's owned by somebody else, we would just take the steering wheel off and put a cap where the steering wheel currently touches. In the future, we'll, the probability of the steering wheel being taken away in the future is 100%. Consumers will demand it. This is not me prescribing a point of view about the world. This is me predicting what consumers will demand. Consumers will demand in the future that people are not allowed to drive these two-ton death machines. Let's steer into the future of steering, or perhaps the lack thereof. Tesla envisions a transition period where you can still grab the wheel if you feel nostalgic, but eventually they plan to phase out steering wheel control entirely. Imagine getting into your car and finding no steering wheel, just a smooth dashboard. Tesla might even cap it off remotely, like turning your car into a self-driving pumpkin at midnight, only it doesn't turn back. It's all part of Tesla's plan to make driving hands-free, worry-free, and maybe even steering wheel-free in the future. Tesla is planning to give steering wheels the boot, waiting only for the green light from regulators. Elon Musk is betting big that consumers will eventually demand fully autonomous driving. Picture this. A world where driving means telling your car where to go while you kick back and catch up on your latest binge watch. It's like turning every commute into a mini vacation courtesy of technology. I think like probably, yeah, like Tesla owned robo taxis would be in, in dense urban areas along with customer vehicles. And then as you get to medium and low density areas, it would tend to be more that people own the car and occasionally lend it out. Yeah, there are a lot of edge cases in Manhattan and say downtown San Francisco. But those are, and there are various cities around the world that, that have a challenging urban environments. But we do not expect this to be a significant issue. When I say future complete, it will work in downtown San Francisco and downtown Manhattan this year. Right now, AI and neural nets are used really for object recognition. And we're still basically just using it as still frames. So identifying objects and still frames and tying it together in a perception path planning layer thereafter. The, but what's happening is steadily is that the neural net is eating into the software base more and more. And so over time, we expect the neural net to do more and more. It's clear that Tesla is not just making smarter cars. They're teaching them to think like humans. Currently, their neural nets are busy recognizing objects like spotting a stop sign or a pedestrian, but soon they'll be navigating bustling city streets like downtown San Francisco and Manhattan. Thanks to the Dojo system, Tesla's training its cars to mimic human driving behaviors. It's as if your car went to driving school and graduated top of its class, ready to take on the urban jungle with a silicon-based swagger. Occasionally, a thousand times easier than a neural net. The neural net's like a cruise missile. And if you're trying to swat a fly, just use a fly swatter, not a cruise missile. So, but over time, I, I would expect that it moves really to just training it on against video, and then video in, car steering, and pedals out. Or basically, video in, that lateral and longitudinal acceleration out, almost entirely. That's what we're going to use the Dojo system for. There's no system that can currently do that. Essentially, the car is going to do what a human would do. I can think of a human as like basically uh, a camera on a slow gimbal, and it's, it's remarkable that people are able to drive the car in the way that they are. Because if, if you know, you can't look in all directions at once. The car can literally look in all directions at once with multiple cameras. So humans are able to drive just by looking this way, looking that way. They're actually stuck in their driver's seat. They can't really get out of the driver's seat. So it's like kind of one camera on a gimbal and is able to drive, a conscientious driver can drive with very high safety. From that, we learn that Tesla cars are turning the safety game on its head. With cameras offering better vantage points than a human driver could ever achieve, 
These cars are making driving about twice as safe as the average human piloted ride. Imagine your car having eyes in the back of its head, on its sides, and even on top. Basically a 360 degree field of vision. It's like giving Superman the wheel, only he's more interested in traffic safety than fighting crime. From cars without steering wheels to advanced neural nets navigating the busiest city streets, Tesla is not just pushing the envelope, they're redesigning it. We've seen how Tesla plans to revolutionize driving with robo-taxis designed for a million miles, how their vast fleet is gathering invaluable data to outpace competitors, and how their cutting-edge technology aims to make driving safer than ever. Plus, with plans to phase out steering wheels once regulators give the nod, the future of driving looks like it's going to be hands-free. So what do you think about Tesla's bold moves? Are you ready to ride in a car without a steering wheel? How do you feel about letting AI take the wheel in city traffic? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into Tesla's world of innovation and want to keep up with the latest in Tesla tech and stock news, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Tesla Stock News. Thank you for watching and see you again in our next videos.